Today's Ask the Doctor segment is all about preventing heart disease. Dr. David Fino from Shelby Baptist Medical Center here to answer your questions. I want you to give us a call right now, 205-741-9272. If you have a question you'd like to ask the doctor, and there are so many things about heart disease, we already have a caller, so let's go straight to it. It's Cynthia in Birmingham. Cynthia, what is your question about heart disease for Dr. Fino? Hello. Uh, yes, Cynthia, what is your question? I'm concerned about diastolic dysfunction. I had a stress test and they gave me that diagnosis. Sure, so the question uh, Cynthia is asking is about diastolic dysfunction, and this is something that is relatively new in cardiology, even for um, those of us who've recently graduated. Um, uh, it refers to a condition of the heart where the heart does not fill correctly. It can be associated with shortness of breath and usually we focus most of the treatment plan on things that will um, lower the stress on the heart. So things like lowering your blood pressure, making sure you exercise regularly, being careful with your weight. Uh, obviously all of this plan should go through you and a doctor, but it refers to a condition of the heart where it does not fill quite normally and blood backs up to the lungs causing shortness of breath. I don't know if you have any of those symptoms, Cynthia? Uh, I, I think, I hope, Cynthia, I hope that has answered uh, your question there. When we talk about heart disease, um, people tend to think, oh, that's for older people or for men. Uh, but heart disease is something really we should all be paying attention to uh, from, from the ground up, right? No question about it, Janet. The question the caller had about diastolic dysfunction actually affects all age groups. We see it uh, even in our teenage population, certainly the ones that are struggling with uh, their weight. They'll come in with shortness of breath. They'll have absolutely normal pump function or systolic function of the heart, but we find that their heart doesn't fill quite right. And that's a uh, diastolic problem. And that's where, again, we focus the treatment plan on blood pressure control, exercise, and an excellent weight uh, reduction program. Okay. Often these kids need to be told to go outside and play. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Mom always tells us those things, don't they? Uh, we have another caller, Mary in Tarrant. Mary, what is your question? Uh, yes, I was diagnosed with heart failure um, and was hospitalized for about five days, and they uh, did all the stuff my cholesterols are good and all that. I don't have any clogs in my no heart attack, nothing's wrong with that. And I don't know, Lyrica was a medication I was on. Could that have been the causative agent? I was taking 150 four times a day, 150 milligrams. And um, I'd had a cardiac PET scan and she said I was low, normal, perfusing, but normal. Is it okay to not be worried about that anymore? I mean, I know I'm not gonna take Lyrica, but what um, safety things for myself should I do? I'm 61, I'm 124 pounds, I take Lasix, I don't have high blood pressure. Mary's so, looking for a full examination. I, oh, I just, what, what can you I just want her? a kind of general question to make sure this is the right <laughs> thing no, to do thank, instead thank of having a specialized test once a year or something to check on it or Sure, what? Sure. sure. Well, Go ahead. Mary, uh, for a couple of things. First of all, I'm really glad that you're reaching out and that you're aware that heart failure is a serious condition and it will need to be followed probably by a couple of doctors, your general doctor and perhaps a cardiovascular specialist. Uh, hearing what you're talking about, uh, the concern in your voice is obvious. Uh, to answer your question directly, Lyrica is not usually associated with heart failure, but one of my treatment paradigms when I see patients is I will attempt to get them off any unnecessary medications, even those that are helping prevent some of their chronic pain, which is usually what Lyrica is used for. As far as the PET scan goes, it sounds like um, the results were relatively good. A cardiologist or your cardiovascular specialist would want to review those directly with you and then obviously take all the usual steps we would with a heart failure patient, things like daily weights, uh, salt reduction in the diet, 
careful blood pressure control, and then, uh, most importantly, amelioration of any reversible causes of heart failure, such as a blockage. From your story, I think it'd be very important to touch base with a cardiologist, uh, a specialist who uh, spends nothing uh, but their entire day answering these exact questions. And um, there are many in the area. Uh, we'd, we'd be honored to see you anytime. All right, let's, uh, Linda in Leeds uh, has our next question. Linda, what's your question? Do we still have Linda? Yes, you do. Uh, go ahead, Linda. What's your okay. question? Um, yes, I am interested in finding out what would be the best form of calcium uh, to take, you know, in an effort to keep bones strong, but what is the best form of calcium to not create deposits on the heart or within the heart and artery? Good question. It's, it's an outstanding question. So Linda is touching on something that is a topic of a lot of debate here in the internal medicine and the cardiac community. Um, calcium, as we know, is critical for bone formation and especially as women get older, calcium uh, reduction in the largest bones of the body is associated with hip fractures. It's the target of our therapies and what we use to uh, help people prevent hip fractures um, in their later decades. The issue comes in when we supplement this calcium, is this in fact depositing in the arterial walls, which is exactly the opposite of what a cardiologist wants, and is it accelerating the process of atherosclerosis or blockages of the arteries of the heart. So to answer your question uh, directly, the um, most biologically available form of calcium is unknown. <laughs> it's probably related to natural sources. So foods that are rich in calcium include all the dairy products, things like spinach, and then a careful look at your typical food labels may be uh, in order for your situation. There is some uh, data suggesting now that calcium citrate and calcium citrate malate may be more biologically absorbable than calcium carbonate, which used to be the predominant form of calcium in over-the-counter supplements, but that it actually hasn't been proven. The other thing you may want to do is follow whatever changes you make with a scan of your bone density called a DEXA scan. So for example, if you're supplementing right now, you may want to talk with your internal medicine doctor about checking a DEXA scan in six months to see if you're moving in the right direction. At the same time, your cardiovascular specialist could tell you if your heart and cholesterol and things like that are moving in the right direction, you could adjust your answer accordingly. All right, uh, Dr. Uh, David Pino, thanks so much. I, I think we might have a few other callers uh, still wanting to get some information, but thank you for spending uh, your time with us. We appreciate it. My we'll pleasure. be back with more in just a moment.